Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast, a radio show coming to you on this workout Wednesday, just after 12 o'clock. Before I hop into my own sweat session, hopefully you guys are going to do the same or have already been active today. If not, a reminder, you still have time to get that workout in. And sometimes you might not feel motivated to do it, and admittedly, it does suck. Uh, sometimes you're in the middle of it, but it always does feel better to have that sense of accomplishment that you, you know, put some points up on the scoreboard, you know, and live to uh, to play the game another day. So that's what I got going on after this. But I wanted to drop you all a podcast talking about Mindset 101 in the current season we're in. And when we come out of it, how to just kind of approach every single day just to kick ass on all levels. So with that, just a quick update. Uh, been busy here for sure, just trying to kind of navigate uh, the landscape that we're in, commenting and just creating as much quality information that I can for our athletes and clients and all of our coaching groups and then to all of you listening uh, who pick up all the free stuff that we throw out there along the way. I actually have a Zoom call in a couple hours here with the University of Minnesota Morris baseball team. Uh, one of my homies I grew up with is actually the head coach now, so just goes to show you out there, if you grew up a criminal uh, doing a bunch of dumb stuff, there is uh, light at the end of the tunnel. If you get your shit together, you can have a real career uh, and a job and impact people uh, around the world. So he reached out to me a couple days ago and said, hey, could you talk to our team? We're actually all just, you know, homeschooling now because of the quarantine. So the players are all kind of connected, you know, in their you know respective hometowns and states. And so he wanted me to pop on and just give them a chat about uh, nutrition, training, and, and mindset, and, and obviously I, I was in a lot of their shoes uh, for one, or worse off than, than a lot of those guys are. And so if I could make it, hopefully I can share a story with them that they can make it and uh, you know be healthy and, and happy and successful in their life, not only during their athletic career, but far beyond that. So short of that, just uh, literally trying to be as positive here as possible with everything we're doing, kind of forecasting what it's going to look like after our 47-day uh, rolls through, which for you guys listening, our 34-day to fit challenge is kind of like a fitness uh, step up from the 47-day. That uh, We are be kicking that off in about 30 days from today. So it's April the 8th. So I believe on, what is that, May? Yeah, that's right. That's a little months ago. Uh, May 8th, I believe our 34 Days to Fit will be kicking off. And I'll share more of that as we go for you guys if you're interested. Uh, but that's what we'll be rolling out for those guys if the, all the gyms in the world are still closed, which I fear may be the case. So I'm preparing for that uh, and just doing the best I can to keep everybody active and healthy and happy and sane during this time and, and trying to coach them to the best of my ability, which brings me to today's podcast, Mindset 101. Now, I got this a long time ago from my homie Pat Rigsby. And again, like I've said before, Pat has helped me a lot in my fitness career, specifically on the business side and, and how to, you know, run a sustainable business for well over a decade now. And, and here I am still breathing, even through uh, the financial crisis of 07, 08 and uh, through the shit storm we're currently sitting in now. So... I wanted to share this because I think for a lot of you, whether you, you run your own business, whether you work for a small company, big company, whether you're furloughed or laid off or you're just working from home and there's this kind of this strange time in the middle, I want to share the mindset because now more than ever, I do think it's uh, important. And by the way, I have to share this. This happened in real time. I literally just looked out the window here of our facility, which has been closed for 20 some days now, and a son and a father just walked by as they're on a walk and they both have these Batman face masks on. They're actually pretty badass. I wish I would've got one of those. It's like a face mask that covers your nose and face, but it comes all the way up over the head like a ski mask would, but it has the Batman uh, little things on the top of it. That is amazing. Man, I have like a uh, mask envy right now. Anyways, I wanted to share this because I, I do think uh, this mindset piece is important. And I think we've all had these conversations in our heads uh, you know, in the past and specifically now of, you know, what's holding us back and, you know, I guess all the shitty things in this situation as opposed to all the positive things. And so have you ever let your mindset hold you back would be my question. And you guys are going, well, yeah, Jeremy, it's a stupid ass question. It's probably holding you back right now or it has in the past or there might be some, you know, valley in the future of shit you have to wade through that's 
in your mind is the biggest thing that's gonna hold you back. And I think we all have, right? I think you would be inhuman if the way you think about things or have thought about certain situations or settings haven't held you back. And at some point, we've all felt like we probably weren't enough or that we kind of have this sense of like hopelessness or we feel like our back's against the wall and there's kind of no way out of it. And, and throughout my life, at some point or another, I have felt like whatever I wanted to accomplish was impossible, at least for me anyway. And I've shared the story many times when I was at my, I guess you would put it you know, rock bottom and a crossroads when I had graduated college shortly after the, the financial crisis had happened and the world was melting down. I've shared the story before. I went to like 50 job interviews. Now those 50 job interviews, 45 of them told me to get lost and I suck. And the five shitty job offers I did get were for little to no money and there are things I hated to do. But I just had to pick something because it, A, I, I don't come from money. I grew up dead broke. And at that time I was probably down to my last, probably like 700 bucks. Uh, to my name. And with that $700, I still I remember I owed uh, money on, on care credit for my LASIK eye surgery. So I actually had a, had a negative net worth at the time. But I remember feeling like it would be impossible for me to ever get a job that paid me, say, $50,000 a year. I thought it'd be impossible for me to ever like actually own a home. And I don't just mean like pay one off, which is what we did a month ago, oddly enough, before all this shit hit. But I mean, just like have a down payment to buy a house, to get a mortgage, to, to make payments for 30 years. I literally thought that was impossible because, I, and again, I've shared this before, I remember sitting in the lobby of our old space that we used to lease before we bought this one and said, if we could just get 100 people to believe in us, that would be amazing. And I thought that was impossible. So I think throughout our lives, we've all felt an impossibility at some point, like, how are we going to make this happen? I've also thought at some point in my life, like, I don't have the resources to get things done. I'm not smart enough to accomplish this. I'm not talented enough to accomplish this. I don't look the part. I don't have the right background. You name it, I have felt that at some point in time in my life. I don't feel as much of those things now, but even uh, let's say 20 some days ago, when we shut down before the state mandate happened, I had probably two or three moments of like, oh shit, how am I going to navigate this and how am I going to figure it out? And a lot of you guys are probably in that boat right now. So just know you're not alone. It's a humanistic thing. And along the way of having those thoughts, I was conditioned to believe things like money is always scarce. I wasn't born with it. My parents aren't rich. They don't have a great financial education and background. They never had money. So I don't have money. That's only for rich people. And I'm fucked since that's not how I grew up. So I had a belief system of money was scarce. And I always heard growing up, getting a stable job was the right thing to do. And I'll, I'll touch on that in a second. And again, I don't have the answer for everybody. These are all, there's a health crisis and there's a financial crisis that is gonna be just as, as big probably, if not bigger And the, the ripple effects of that. I don't know what it will look like, but it's not overly positive at the moment when you look at it. But I always thought like getting a stable job was the right thing to do. And you can go back and forth with that. There's stress of being an entrepreneur and there's stress of working for a major company. I guess at least the benefit to this life is, is that we're diversified in the way that we make our money and how we do things. So that's the one positive. But how I grew up was money is scarce. You have to get a stable job. That's the right thing to do because being some dipshit fitness person is never gonna pay the bills. Oddly enough, I, I sit here you know, 15 years later you're also taught when you go through these kind of thought patterns that you don't question authority, which I believe now we're starting to as, as humans more so than ever. And I, I believe you guys have to as well. I was always taught, you know, don't stand out. And I believe things like the opportunities in my town or my city limits, you know, are the only thing that's available to me. Now, obviously we know with things like with the internet and social media, you guys literally the world is your oyster if you choose to put in the work and truly help people. I also used to believe things like circumstance always dictated the results and that being really successful or really wealthy was for other people. And I think a lot of people listening to me, if you find yourself in a struggle or a battle, you might believe some of those things that your circumstances are the only thing that dictate your results. 
but they're not. And successful and wealthy people aren't just other people. They're you, they're me, they're everybody who is diligent and willing to take the road less traveled and wants to put in the work and will hustle and grind and will swallow their fucking pride and do whatever they have to do to survive in the times when things are their shittiest. So as I list those things, do any of those things sound familiar to you guys? Or more importantly, the question is, have you ever experienced one or more of those feelings? And well, I believe you have. And so along the way, I learned that most of those things were lies, if not all of them at some point or time. And eventually you start to replace those old thought processes or your old story with the truth. And I've talked about this before. It's a module in our 47 day transformation program, your story. When I say your story, it's the story of I'm too fat, I'm too slow, I'm too stupid, I'm too poor, I'm too fill in the blank. And you believe that because somebody told it to you when you're eight, nine or 10, and then you just carry it with you for the rest of your life. That's That was implanted there by somebody else. You have to know that sometimes it's a friend, sometimes it's an enemy, sometimes it's a teacher, sometimes it's a parent or a family member, which sucks, but that happens. Where you have this belief system of, oh, I'm, I'm too stupid, it'll never happen. Well, you don't inherently believe that of yourself. It was, you drew that conclusion from what people said and thought or your test scores or your class rank or whatever it was, but you're not too stupid. And even if you feel like you weren't a great student and you were dumb when you were eight, nine or 10, that has nothing to do when you're 32, 33, 34. I'm the same way. I sucked at school. Now in college, I got really good grades because I died for it. But my grades were terrible in elementary school, in middle school, and high school. If I didn't play sports, I wasn't going to fucking college. That's just probably was my reality, right? A, I didn't have the money. But two, my, my grades were awful. What school would want me? I'm a dipshit with no money. Not a, not a great recruit, right? But if you can play sports, there's a window. The point of me sharing that is I can't keep that belief system my whole life. If I sucked at geometry, if I was terrible at American history, it doesn't mean I'm an idiot in life. It just means I wasn't great at those things. I wasn't playing to my strengths. I didn't find my groove. That's why I talk about your story. So if you guys are out there right now living a story, I always have to do this. This is There's a lot of things you can do. You can learn new skills. You can change lanes. You can shift gears. You can become something different. You just have to have a belief in yourself. And so I started replacing those old thought processes. And that's what it's called Mindset 101. These are old processes. These are old stories. Well, you can change your story. You can write a new chapter. You can flip the script. You can add another piece to the puzzle. So I stopped saying those things like, I'm too stupid, I'm too dumb, I'm too poor. And you replace them with different truths. Like, I am smart enough. And again, I always talk about this. Intelligence, like IQ-wise and emotional intelligence are two different things. And I would argue being emotionally intelligent is far more important than having a higher IQ. Just for the fact that now you have access to information at your fingertips, we're all really smart with an iPhone. Immediately, look, we're all pretty smart with an iPhone if we learn how to use Google and search. We're all pretty stupid without it. But it levels the playing field for a lot of us, which back in the day we didn't have that, now we do. So if you're an emotionally intelligent person, you're nice, you're kind, you're polite, you're filled with gratitude, you hustle, you get up early, you show up early, you're willing to stay late, you'll swallow your pride, that's a skill set. So you have to top, stop telling yourself, I'm too stupid, you are smart enough. You are resourceful enough. I also started placing these truths with things like, Jeremy, you have your own unique talents and strengths. And so you should build your life around those, which is what I've done, create an ecosystem that plays to my strengths. And I don't focus on things that I suck at. I work to be competent at things, but I go all in on my strengths. I double down on them because that's how I'm going to be the most successful. If you're a shooter, you shoot, right? Like shoot or shoot in basketball. You shoot to get hot, shoot to stay hot. Even if you miss 20 shots in a row, you have to have this belief that shot 21 is going in. So if you're a shooter, you shoot. You play to your strengths. If you're terrible at shooting, you probably don't shoot that much. Now you can practice to get better, but some people are going to be naturally great at it, so you play to your strengths. They don't put a pitcher to play catcher. They don't have the catcher pitch. They put them in the positions to be successful. They're not great at all positions. They might be competent at some of them, but they play to their strengths at the position they're put in. 
Another thing I tell myself is there is more than enough opportunity. There is more than enough opportunity for me. Even though our gym is currently closed down, which sucks, and do we hemorrhage money every day because of it? Yes, it's fucking terrible. But there is still more than enough opportunity out there for me to survive. There's enough opportunity out there for me to go get, to meet people, to connect with them, to help them, to provide value for them, to keep this train rolling. It's the same thing for you. If your job is laid off, if your job is furloughed, there is still enough opportunity out there at the moment. It might not be ideal. It might be a major pay cut. It might be a major change in lifestyle and what you're doing. But there is opportunity out there if you need it. And there's resources out there as well if you look for them. Is it ideal? No. Does it kind of suck shit? Sure. But there is opportunity in the chaos. Also, how I respond to my circumstances is what will dictate my results. I can't control the circumstance we're sitting in now, but how I personally respond to it is gonna dictate my results, not just now in it and six months from now, but probably six years from now. Where a lot of people will drown and will struggle and they won't make it through and there'll be a distant memory of what this is. If I can respond to these circumstances and put myself in a position to be successful, that's gonna dictate my results now, six months from now, and probably six years from now, in all reality. Also, it's up to me to do the work. Nobody's gonna do it for me. Nobody's gonna call and motivate me. No one's gonna give me a pat on the back. Nobody's gonna give me a pep talk. I have to fucking do it. If I can be that person for you, I'm happy to do that for you guys, but it's up to you to do the work. I can say all these things. I can put out the videos. I can send out the emails. I can write the blogs. I can give out as much awesome stuff to get you jacked and hyped as possible to wake you up with your ass on fire, but you still have to do the work. Nobody can do it for you, and you should want to do it because there's there's something in that. When you do it for yourself, when you crawl back from some shit and you overcome, that's when the sweet stuff starts to happen. You also have to understand that most things are possible. Not everything, for sure. If you just lost your job and you're trying to be the next Jeff Bezos, eh, probably not going to happen. If I want to go play, you know, wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings, eh, probably not going to happen. But short of that, right, like most things are possible if you're willing to put in the work or some version of that is possible for you. And just know, resources play much less of a role in success than effort, consistency, and perseverance. I need you guys to hear that. You might be stuck in a small town, in a small place with not a lot of opportunity, or you might be stuck somewhere where it's on lockdown and the jobs are scarce and maybe, you know, you can't really do what you're used to doing and your career is, is currently on hold and it's in a pause season, if you will, and that bites. But the resources you have play much less of a role in your success than your effort, your consistency, your willingness to adapt, and your perseverance. And just know your greatest resource is resourcefulness. It might not actually be a tangible resource. It might be resourcefulness of you of what you can do to provide value and to navigate a shitty situation, which albeit, you know, that's what we're kind of stuck in at the moment. And being completely transparent here, uh, I'm not a robot, I'm a human being, I have feelings just like you guys. I probably hide the shit better, um, swallow it better, digest it better than most people, if you will. And that's not me putting on a front here trying to fake for anybody, but I don't want to share all the negative shit of life with you guys because that's not what you're here for. But being completely honest, like, yeah, I still have doubts. And uh, sometimes those things creep into my mind from time to time, but not that much uh, compared to what I was like 10 years ago and 15 years ago. And admittedly, probably, you know, more doubt has creeped into my mind in the last few weeks. Um, than has in probably the last 10 years. And I believe that's natural. But I know I don't need to feed those fears. I know I don't need to dwell on them. I know when I find myself in a negative mindset, I need to just stop, take a minute to breathe, be mindful, and find gratitude for all the awesome shit I do have going on in my life and not worry about uh, well, I'm losing out on this, or this opportunity is not going to come, or we got to push this off, and we were going to make this much money, and this was my plan. The plan has to change. This is an unforeseeable thing that you did not plan for, and you know nobody deserves it, and it, it sucks, but it's 
the hand we're dealt at the moment. We can only play it the best we can play it. But I don't have to feed the fear. I don't have to feed the doubt. I don't have to get down a negative rabbit hole of shit. Instead, I can focus on the truths and be positive. And I can focus on how hard I've worked to this point. I can focus on all the opportunities that are still available and all the things that have allowed me to achieve any success I have accomplished along the way. And so when you find your mindset drifting to places that don't serve you well, which I believe everybody listening right now, you've been there during the last month. You have been there for sure. So when you find your mind drifting to that place of shit that's not serving you, I suggest that you list out your own truths, like the ones I shared here, and focus on those. And I believe you can accomplish more than you think, but you have to believe that you can. And if you don't believe it, I, I can promise you nobody else is going to believe it either. And I'll leave you with this. Play offense, as I call it, and don't always be in defensive mode. Now, that, that doesn't mean go out and invest all your money in the stock market because it is going to come back. And I think, you know, six months from now or a year from now, the stock market will bounce back and, and it'll be crushing. And again, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a financial analyst. I don't have a, you know, a background in forecasting what the market's going to do. But I think if you look at the trends over time with the shit, which I've lived through 9-11, I've lived through the 07, 08 shit, and I'm living through this. I think when you look at those six, 10, 12 months post that, the market's back and rolling. And when I say by play offense, don't always be in defense mode. It doesn't mean go and invest all your money in the stock market and be stupid. If you lost your job or you're furloughed or something, be conservative with your cash, obviously. But what I mean play offense is, is being in the mindset of attack mode, of being able to crush today, making the most of today, whether that's you know searching for a different job, doing a side hustle, some kind of work from home thing, or if it's you know delivery stuff, Anybody who is hiring, if you need the resources, go out and get them and crush today. Or if you have the means where you can stay home and you can be safe, please do that. But be healthy. Work on your physical body. Work on your mobility. Work on getting quality sleep. Working on being more mindful. Work on spending quality time with your husband and your wife and your family. Because this season will be over and you'll probably never get a chance to do it in that capacity again. So work on being offensive in that mindset and in attack mode in terms of looking at what you've done for your career, what you're currently doing, and is it what you wanna go back to? Or do you wanna go back to something different? Is this somehow some weird kind of fucked up blessing in disguise where you can be like, you know what? My job sucks, I hate it. Now it's time where I can, I can change gears. I can do something different. I can do what I've always wanted to do or I can start my own business or I can write that book or I can get into whatever it is that's been holding you back from getting into. So focus on crushing today and doing all the things that are important for your mind and your body and your soul today. And you can plan for tomorrow, you know, knowing you might have to change gears and shift depending on, you know, what, what comes out or how things evolve from this. And you can forecast for the future in your mind and think like, what do I want to be doing in 30, 60, 90 days you know, six months from now, a year from now. And whether that is 100% accurate or not, at least you have it, you know, in the forefront. But we have to get through today before we can get to tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And don't play the doomsday scenario stuff. Just be positive. And again, if you find your mind drifting to the shit places or getting sucked into the negative news or text or social media, stop, delete, unplug from those things and list out your truths. The ones that are going to get you to a place where you can mentally be a badass and crush everything that comes your way. And just focus on those. And all the positive, amazing blessings in your life, not all the negative shit. And I shared this on an IGTV uh, video yesterday for you guys who follow us over there. And it's a simple saying. We put on t-shirts. And when all this stuff is over, I'm going to print this on so many fucking shirts. And I'm going to wear that shit every single day. And I'm happy to send them to you guys uh, when this is all over, obviously we're closed down now. Our staff is not here. We don't, we're not sending out anything because uh, times are not amazing here, even for us. But, uh, and the phrase is this, someone else is praying for the things you take for granted. I've made this on shirts for the last five years and I'm going to go so hard on these when this is over with. Someone else is praying for the things you take for granted. And admittedly, this sucks. But if you're listening to me on your iPhone, 
on iTunes, on Spotify, on your computer, on your Mac, whatever it is, you have a pretty good life. And if you're not sick and you're not in the hospital and you don't have to deal with all the shit, you're doing okay. And admittedly, is it fun? No, it sucks. None of us likes to take a step backwards. None of us likes to pause. None of us likes to lose money. None of us likes to lose a job. None of us likes to feel less than ideal or have a, a sense of uncertainty and stress and anxiety. It's not fun. But I promise you, someone else is praying for the things you take for granted right now, whether that be Netflix or a loving family or food in the fridge or a non-abusive home or a pool or a sunny day, whatever it may be. There's people who are praying right now for the things you take for granted. And the last thing I'll leave you with is this, and I share this a lot. If we all threw our pile problems in the middle of a room in a big pile, and you could see what everybody else in your town, in your state, in your country is dealing with right now, you could see all the shit that they're chewing on. I promise you, you guys would run in that pile pretty quick and bring your problems back to your house because you're seeing what everybody else is having to chew on. And that's just the thing about perspective uh, and gratitude for even the smallest stuff. And so as much as I don't like this as you guys, I'm, I'm pretty grateful because of A, just how, how you know lucky I've been and the amazing people and athletes and clients that surround us and support what we do. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. But understanding I put myself in a position to be here. And I take care of myself and I, and I get quality sleep and I exercise and I do the things that are right to allow me to think this way and move this way and feel this way. And I urge you guys to do the same. So this is my quick note today on Mindset 101. Nothing earth shattering, all things you guys know, but I know right now in a time of, you know, less than ideal, you know, circumstance and situation, messages like this uh, carry a lot of weight and they mean a lot uh, to all of us. And I know it's nice for me to hear things like this and read things like this. And I'm sure the same is for you. So if you guys dig this, share it with a friend, family member, forward it to them on Instagram or email or Facebook, wherever you're listening, just shoot them the link, hit copy, send, because I know it, uh, it can pull people out of some shit. And sometimes, you know, when you're in the dark, it's nice uh, to see some sunlight kind of shine through. So Reminder, as always, if you're on iTunes right now, stop. Don't be a lazy ass. Drop me a five-star. Leave a comment. If you're on your iPhone, go to that simple podcast application. Scroll your finger all the way down the Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast. Five-star. Give me a little one sentence or two of what you think of the podcast. I'd appreciate it. Same thing if you're on your MacBook or your iPad. iTunes icon right there. Five-star. And drop me a couple lines. I thank you guys for that. It means more than you know. If there's anything else you guys want to hear on the podcast or have requests, please shoot me a message. If I can speak on it with any intelligence, I'm happy to do so. And again, I'll keep you guys updated as we roll and the programs that we have rolling out. But again, obviously, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. These are all posted on our YouTube page now. We're loading stuff to YouTube every single day. Instagram, we're posting every day. Same thing for Facebook. And obviously, of course, if you guys want to work with us on a deeper level, we have programs running all year long. And uh, I'll dig into more of that as we go. So thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Get your mind right and get your grind right. We'll all make it through this. I promise you that. We'll be more badass humans when we come out on the other end. So until next time, eat well, train hard, be nice to people. And please, you guys, keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.